Hello and welcome to uh, today's lesson on local government and local government systems. Uh, let's start by talking about the fact that constitutionally, the U.S. Constitution grants specific powers to both federal and state governments. So these guys are mentioned in the Constitution. They have to exist. Local governments don't constitutionally have to exist um, when we look at the U.S. Constitution. However, states long ago recognized that it was worthwhile for them to create these local government entities to help them do their thing. At first, they were created at a county level, so that's where we're gonna start today's lessons by looking at counties. Now, county officials. Um, county officials exist to help the state do two essential things, collect taxes and provide services. That's why we have local governments primarily to do these two things. Counties, are governed by an elected board of officers. So here in Oakland County, uh, we can elect ca uh, county officers, like a county commissioner, to do this work at the county level. The best known of these elected positions is generally your sheriff. Your sheriff is in charge of local law enforcement, um, and each county tends to have one of these sheriffs who helps to manage those local laws. Now below the county level, we have townships. Now, townships don't exist everywhere, but they do in uh, the mid-Atlantic states, and they do here in the Midwest. Counties are divisions of townships. So you might look at this map, for example, and this outside line represents a county. And then inside, we have these divisions. These divisions are townships, those other squares, and they tend to measure uh, six miles by six miles, six miles tall, six miles wide. Um, now, originally these were created in order to help county maintenance and to provide schools. So within this six by six area, one square mile, usually right near the center, is going to be reserved for government buildings and for a school. And uh, that way each township is guaranteed to have some sort of education available within it. Now today, as cities expand and cities grow, the townships that surround them are starting to shrink. So anytime you've got the city, the township doesn't govern inside the city. And the city is something else, and we'll get to cities in a little bit. Uh, but these are townships. Now New England did things a little bit differently. Um, early immigrants in New England right away started to create towns. So they didn't worry about the county government. They focused on town governments. And, towns would govern the areas around them as well. The residents of that town would usually meet about once a year, and they would sit down and they would write their own laws, and they would elect their own officials. And we had this kind of direct democracy where everybody had a say, everybody meaning, you know, white males 25 years or older who owned property, because this was the 1700s, um, they would come together and write laws and elect officials to then enforce those laws throughout the year. Today, this is not all that common. Uh, if you were to think about doing this in Pontiac with 60,000 people, it would be pretty difficult to hold that meeting and to get anything done with 60,000 different voices. Uh, but a few small towns in New England still do have these town hall meetings. We also have special districts. Uh, sometimes, for whatever reason, a particular area uh, can't govern itself. They cannot provide services to all of its residents. This could be because um, a large employer left an area and the population has dropped a lot. So they had a lot of roads and a lot of infrastructure, a lot of water pipes, and they still need to maintain all this stuff. But now there are fewer people there to maintain them. We might create a special district to help manage that and make sure that they still have police and fire services. You also see these special uh, districts out in countryside, where you might have a township in the middle of a state somewhere where 10 people live in the entire township. It's just not got a lot of population out there. Well, 10 people can't maintain roads, can't maintain a fire department. So they might become part of another special district that shares resources and does a regional government that goes beyond your township level. All right, cities. Cities are a major uh, feature in American government at a local level. Now, cities are just one form of a municipality. Municipalities are areas where you've got a bunch of people living close together, 
and it's not a farming community by its nature. So you've got a lot of people living together and you've got people who do jobs that are not agriculture related. Um, the best known of these would of course be cities, uh, but towns and villages are also falling under this definition of municipality. Now, what is the difference between a city, a town, or a village? Um, states define them differently and treat them differently within state law. So there's no one answer to that question. Uh, but generally speaking, if you've got many thousands of people, we're now talking about a city. Uh, cities have a large population generally centered around a business district. So most cities do have something that's recognizable as a downtown area. So how do we govern cities? Well, the mayor council plan is one way that a city can be governed. That is where you've got a mayor as a chief executive. That is the mayor enforces all the laws and the regulations and runs the city. The city council is a legislature. So they're the ones that creates the rules and the guidelines and the guidance for how the city should be run by the mayor. In a weak mayor plan, you have the mayor actually being elected by the council. So the people would elect the city council and then the city council would choose the mayor. This is not very common in the United States. Uh, most United States cities use a strong mayor plan. And this is where the council is elected by the people and the mayor is also elected by the people. Uh, most cities, including Pontiac, choose this model. The next plan is the council manager plan. In a council manager plan, this was created to reduce corruption that can sometimes come about by having an elected mayor, people who you know, do a favor for the mayor and therefore the mayor gives them preferable, uh, preferential treatment. The council manager plan is supposed to get rid of that. In this, you elect your council members, but the council members are not political party members and their main role is to uh, then turn around and hire a really effective city manager. Uh, city managers tend to be businessmen, but not always. Um, and a lot of them are very professionalized. These are people who, as their job, they go from city to city, managing those cities through a particular moment or through a particular crisis. So you might have an elected council hire somebody to come in and be the city manager to help them navigate a particular moment in their history's time, uh, in their town's history. Uh, so that's why that model might be used. The final one that we'll look at is the commission plan. Under a commission plan, you don't have a city council. You don't have a mayor and you don't have a manager. You get rid of all those ideas. And the voters simply elect the heads of each of the executive departments. So you would elect your commissioner of public safety. You would elect your uh, the director of public sanitation. You would elect your head of parks and recreation. You would elect each and every one of those uh, city leaders directly from the public and then those directors would work together to create any new laws or new legislation that the city needed. Now this plan is not used that much in the United States today but you can find it here and there throughout the country. All right that was it for today's lesson on local government. We reviewed uh, counties and townships and how those were created. We looked at cities and how cities are managed. I hope you were able to learn something today and that you enjoyed today's lesson. Farewell.